Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about <clears throat> is Coney a scam with its 75% dividend yield with the Coney ETF? Let's get it. So the f reason why we're bringing this up and we decided to make a video about this is because we've been seeing some comments lately about <clears throat> saying like, oh, I'm not really impressed with Coney's 75% yield because it's a month and a half's worth of trading or, oh, um, I think that, you know, this or that yield max ETF or whatever high yielding ETF is a scam. Um, the only thing I have to say about that is if it was a scam, there wouldn't be hundreds of millions of dollars in each of these funds or tens of millions of dollars in these funds. They would not be regulated and approved by the SEC. They would not be available on multiple large brokerage exchanges for which you can buy them from. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you guys what those exchanges are right now. So <clears throat> you guys can see that these are some pretty large firms that these guys are partnering with to get their yield max ETFs out to the public. Uh, we use Robinhood. That's one of ours. In addition to that, we also use Webull. But I mean, look at some of these institutions. You have TD Ameritrade. They've been around forever. They're pretty large. Okay. They have the gold standard when it comes to day trading. It's known as the Thinkorswim platform or TOS. Those of you that day trade or swing trade out there know what I'm talking about. When, when I say TOS, um, you have Fidelity Investments. They have $8 trillion in assets. Vanguard has multiple trillions in assets. Charles Schwab has been around for over five decades. I'm not sure how much they have in assets, but it's a lot. The Bank of New York Mellon has been around for over a century. They're a very old, well-established bank in New York State. So the first thing that I want to point out here is that if these were scams, these major multi-billion, multi-trillion dollar institutions would not be listing them. So I don't know who's telling you all that this is the case, but um, it, it's a bunch of nonsense, okay? We have some of our own money invested into these things. We have gotten paid dividend yields out of these things. If it was a scam, we would have put our money in and we would we basically would have gotten nothing out. They would have taken our money and ran, which is not the case. Our money is still sitting here after months of investing into these things. Now, is are these ETFs a scam because the price is going down? No, they're not. We've been trying to teach you guys here about market psychology and how the markets think. This is one of the most important things to understand, not just as a trader, but an investor. The reason being is because when you understand how markets think, you can time your entries and improve your overall income and profitability more exceedingly well than your typical retail trader. Okay. So we're going to use the smart money, dumb money comparison here. So what dumb money does is they'll basically buy as the price is going up. Say it's the greatest thing. The greatest thing since fire was built or fire was created. Okay. And then they'll buy at the top. And then as soon as it starts going down, they'll say, oh, I'm losing money or, oh, this thing is terrible. I don't want to buy it or, oh, it's a scam. Um, you know, they'll basically FOMO in at the top, whereas prices are going up and then they'll panic sell or freak out about it when prices are going down. Guys, we've told you forever now, markets move in waves, okay? They move up, they move down, but markets never go straight up and they never go straight down. As a matter of fact, we're gonna point out some things that we mentioned to you guys before, some indications that the market was gonna reverse to the upside. If you guys have been following our technical analysis <clears throat> on this channel and you've been following us on Twitter, you understand exactly what we're talking about here. So you can see the market pulled back from 4,600 to 4,200. We said, hey, we think we're going to bounce at this red EMA here. You can see this red EMA um, is major support here, and we did get a bounce off of it. We also held this trend line here. So that was one indicator that a reversal was coming and that stocks were going to move back up. Another indicator that we looked at was the stocks above the 50-day moving average on the S&P 500. So basically what we would be looking for is when the number of stocks above the 50 day moving average is at an all time low in this support range down here, this is an excellent time to start buying. Okay. If you're interested in timing the markets, this is what swing traders use. And in some cases, investors, as you can see, this is a multi-year 
um, metric that can be used to time swing trades and investments. Um, and I can't guarantee this, but I'm willing to bet that a lot of smart money inst- institutions and big, you know, big money whales and stuff like that, they're probably looking at the same exact chart where something very similar to the, you know, 50 day moving average uh, stocks of the S&P and the NASDAQ. So basically at the bottom here, you'd want to buy and at the top, you'd want to sell. And um, or if you're not going to sell, you would basically and you want to short instead, you want to short the market, you'd want to short up here if you're a trader and not necessarily an investor. And if you zoom in here, we did tell you guys we got this hammer candle here, basically a wick rejection right off of that support zone. It's not a perfect hammer candle because we have a little baby wick here at the top, but it more or less is a hammer candle. Uh, a green hammer candle like this with a small body close at the top and a large wick to the bottom, especially at the bottom of a trend, is typically a very, very bullish candle. It indicates a p- potential, a high potential for a major reversal here. And so far, we have seen that play out. So there is that. Um, there was another metric I believe we were looking at that. We used to indicate that a reversal was coming, but uh, I can't think of what it is right now. So, um, oh yeah, and the the market pessimism, that's the other thing. When everybody's bearish, everybody's saying, it's, you know, this is a scam, that's a scam. Markets are going to go to zero. Everybody's going to lose money or we're going to have a 50% correction. Usually when there's a huge overbearingly amount of pessimism or optimism in the markets, depending on which direction the markets are going, that's usually when the trend reverses. So in this case, when everybody's super bearish, oh, everything is going to zero, sell all your investments, not financial advice, I'm just saying theoretically, this is what people would be thinking, sell all of your investments and hold cash, right? Guess what? Market reversed and now it's moving back up. This is literally the golden opportunity to be buying right here in the zone. I can tell you guys this as a trader, as an investor, as someone who has traded and invested in futures, crypto stocks, um, ETFs, index funds, money market accounts, uh, high yield savings accounts, bonds. Um, you know, pretty much the only thing that we haven't touched so far is foreign exchange and options. And that's basically it. So is Coney a scam? Well, I mean, it depends on how you want to look at it. So we'll take a look at Coney, the actual ETF. So if we take a look at the price here, you can see that the price has kind of been ranging very similar to Tesla. Let's say that you're of the mindset that this thing is a scam. What's the maximum drawdown this thing had from the top to the bottom? 17.5%. If you held down for 17%, 17% drawdown and sold your investments, then you lose 17% of your money. If you don't sell at all, then you lose nothing and you get a dividend yield in the process. I don't really see how that's a scam. As a matter of fact, a Getting a dividend while the stocks are moving down is one of an investor's favorite things to do is to buy on the dip because they get more income for every dollar spent and they get some downside protection on top of that. And in the future, their, you know, the growth of the capital growth of their investments will typically go up. So you get 17% maximum drawdown so far on Kony, but if we take a look at Coinbase. You can see that the drawdown from the recent peak to the bottom was much larger. Oh, imagine that. With When you buy Coinbase, you're not going to get a, di- a dividend, okay? You're not going to get a passive income yield for buying Coinbase. So if you bought at the top in Coinbase, you're going to be down more than double what you would have been on Coney. And on top of that, you're not going to get a dividend. You're not going to get any kind of passive income out of this. Now, let's be even more ridiculous about this. And understand when you invest in growth stocks, there is no dividend, so you don't get any downside protection. The only thing that you could possibly do is basically just DCA down and pretty much hope and pray that the price goes back up. Or if you're strategic about it, you know how to do technical analysis, you can learn how to time your entries for a potential large upside move. But from the top to the bottom here, you would have been down 90% on your money, okay? 17% down on Coney with a 75% dividend yield, basically erasing all of that downside in a single month, pretty much, or pretty close to it. 
versus not getting a dividend yield and being down 90% if you were the guy that FOMO'd in at the top. This is what we refer to as dumb money. Now, what would smart money do? Smart money would not even touch this thing at the top, and they would basically look for something like a support zone. So we'll take a look at a support zone here. This would basically be a major support zone here. And you, the smart money would be basically buying between 34 to 50 bucks. And as it gets up to your major resistance levels, like this area up here at 117, smart money would be looking to take profit at the top. So basically dumb money is buy at the top, sell at the bottom. Smart money is buy at the bottom, sell at the top. Now, another indicator to use to get in to basically indicate that the trend might be reversing is you have this, you know, break of the overall downtrend here. You can see we got this major, major downtrend going on here. On the weekly time frame, you basically look for a break of that. <clears throat> it's kind of consolidating it at support, and then you get a close above the EMAs here, retesting the EMAs. This would more or less be a pretty ideal entry right here. And then you would have a stop like down below here if you were going to swing trade it and your maximum upside would be all the way at the top. But as I've said to you guys before, um, you know, crypto is very cyclical. It, it operates on four year time frames. Okay. You get a year bear market, a year chop or a sideways accumulation as it's called in crypto, an accumulation zone for about a year, year and a half. And then for the other roughly year to two years, you get a massive bull market. Okay, that's typically how it works. Coinbase is correlated with crypto, so it's going to operate very similar to how Bitcoin and the rest of crypto operates. Now, um, another metric I wanted to mention to you guys is the Fed hiking cycle. We've said this before. The Fed is raising rates. A lot of really, really rich whales and institutions, billionaires, Billionaire whales, rich whales, even crypto whales, like the guys that have 10, 20, 30,000 Bitcoin or Ethereum. When the prices were dropping, they were just sitting on cash or stable coins all the way down. And they were waiting for a bottom to take place to be able to start accumulating. That's the way the whales operate. They're going to sit in cash or cash equivalents. They're not going to touch the markets until they're sure that either one, the bottom is in or and or two. <clears throat> Uh, the Fed has done hiking rates, which it looks like they're about to, but they have not signaled to the market that they're going to start cutting yet. So we suspect that a lot of the trillions of dollars that are sitting on the sidelines are not going to start flowing back into the stock and crypto markets until the Fed is at least halfway through the rate cuts. It seems ridiculous, but usually what happens is when the yield curve uninverts, um, either ahead of or at the Fed rate cuts, what will usually happen is the markets won't fall off a cliff right away. Shortly after that, I would say like roughly about halfway to two thirds of the way through the Fed cutting cycle, the markets tank and they go down 40 to 50%. So a lot of these people that have a lot of money, they want to preserve their wealth. So they're going to sit back, they're going to collect 5% on their cash savings or treasury yields. And they're not going to touch the markets because they don't want to lose money. And it, it's a risk to be invested in risk on assets right now because the Fed is raising rates. Anytime the Fed does this, which usually only happens roughly every 10 to 15 years, a lot of these really wealthy people will not touch risk on assets because they just don't want their, their money to get dumped on and then they lose their principal. And when you're worth a lot of money, that's kind of what you're thinking about. You're more thinking about conserving capital more so than you are growing capital. But as you guys can see here, the uh, treasury yields right here, which is the two year tenure is yielding about 5%. So for these guys, it makes more sense to invest in something that yields 5%. So there's a lot of mitigating factors, a lot of outliers here as to why markets have been getting kind of punished lately. Plus we had the bearish seasonality between September and August that I told you guys about. And it played out almost exactly to a T as we said it would. August and September were bearish, maybe a little into October, and then we moon. We haven't seen the moon part yet, but usually it starts roughly about the middle of the month, which we have CPI tomorrow. If that comes out good, then expect. Plus, we have earnings for the rest of the year. If that all pans out really nicely, then the markets most likely are going to go up through December. So... Um, 
I will tell you guys right now, we only have about five to 8% total of our entire net worth invested into these yield max funds. Uh, so it's a relatively small amount, but it's still a decent amount in, in percentage terms is a small amount, but in dollar amount in dollar terms, it's a, a larger amount. Okay. But we're not going to buy something that is not going to pay us a dividend yield that we think is going to be a scam. We're not. And as you guys have seen here, um, the Kony ETF does pay a dollar twenty, and you guys know that this thing is not a scam because a lot of these ETFs have been paying off for months on end. Yeah, this might be a month and a half worth of trading, but are you really going to complain about getting an eighty cent dividend per month when Coinbase doesn't pay you anything in passive income, <laughs> and it's more expensive to buy to boot? You're paying seventy seven dollars for a share per share for, and getting no passive income. Or you're paying, uh, let's, let's take a look at this. All right, give me a second. This thing's real touch sensitive. Or you're paying basically about a fourth of that price and getting $1.20 or 80 cents a month of passive income. I don't know about y'all, but that seems like a good deal to me. You know, there's upside potential in the next crypto bull run for Kony to Moonshot, as well as Coinbase. And you're going to get a massive dividend yield in the process because it's extremely volatile as a stock. It is. Now, let's take a look at something like Tesla versus Tesla. Okay, we're going to use one more example here. I don't want to get too deep into this, but this is kind of to drive the point home. From uh, the top to the bottom on Tesla, you have roughly about a, we'll say about a 32.5% drop. But all the while, if we go over here to the Tesla ETF, so you get 57 cents uh, per share for every share that you own, regardless of what the price does. Okay, and that obviously the amount that you get paid per month fluctuates based on price volatility. But you're getting an average of a 49% yield on a yearly basis. The maximum drawdown that that Tesla has had is 32%. So within less than a year, you're going to get your money back. Okay. And we showed you guys our portfolio on our recent trades video where we're only down in our Tesla position in M1 by like 4% and our average cost basis is $17 a, sh a share. So um, there's that. Okay. Now, the other thing we want to point out is... Tesla, which is a growth stock, which does not pay a dividend, and that's fine because people invest in it for the capital appreciation. That's a different kind of investor. Those are not dividend investors. Those are growth investors. So Tesla had a maximum drawdown of about 32%, whereas Tesla from the top to the bottom have a, had a maximum drawdown of 74%. Not to mention you would have been paying, even at the lows, you're paying $100 a share for Tesla versus you're only paying... $14 a share for Tesla. So you're getting, you're paying about six times more for a growth stock that's not going to pay you a dividend yield compared to this one that is going to pay you 57 cents for every $14 you invest. So on the surface, in terms of price action, it appears that Tesla has less downside than Tesla does. And for all we know, that the, for all we know, Tesla stock could be in a bear in a bear trend right now. I mean, it was in a bear trend from November, 2021 to January 23. If every time something goes down, you say it's a scam. Well, then that tells me one of two things. Either you have too much money invested. Again, investing is about risk tolerance and it's your guys's money. You can do what you want. You know, we're not financial advisors. We can't tell you what to do, but you know, if you got too much skin in the game, then it might be a good idea to hold a little bit more cash on the side. Um, you know, that's what we do. We have about a year's worth of cash or cash equivalents, not including other, you know, potential available, highly liquid uh, resources that we have. That's just cash. Okay. For multiple reasons. And one of the reasons is to be able to withstand some of these major drawdowns. And the second reason why investors say it's a scam when it goes down is because, you know, maybe they think the markets are going to only ever go up. Guys, generally speaking, over time, the markets go up, but you get a bear market roughly about one every two to one to two decades. It happens. Okay. Inflation happens. Sometimes they go up. Sometimes it stays flat. Sometimes it goes down. It's the job. It's the job of the fed to control it. And that's what they're doing right now. 
if you know if i'm not well i don't i don't want to speak this into existence and i'm not going to but if inflation was exceeding you know not well inflation last year was at nine percent was everybody saying inflation was a scam back then i didn't hear anybody saying inflation was a scam they just said stuff is too expensive so in terms of whether it's a scam or not guys it's not I'm not the only YouTuber talking about this. There's a lot of other major YouTubers out there talking about it with hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars or tens of millions of dollars. Guys, these people with their massive net worths are not going to touch this stuff if they think it's a scam and they're just going to lose money on it. Ultimately, they're not going to do it. I'm telling you right now, they're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. So anyways, that pretty much sums up the video on Kony, and this applies to all the other yield max funds. We're going to continue to invest in it. We think it's a great vehicle for passive income, and we could then use that if we want to, to spread our passive income out to other income producing assets or crypto or whatever we want. So anyways, if you guys have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see y'all later. Peace.